I see from your letter that you have been stricken with a painful affliction. Knowing you are in agony grieves me, but, on the other hand, it is cause for delight. The Vimalakirti Sutra states, once the wealthy Vimalakirti of his own volition became ill. At that time the Buddha told Bodhisattva Manju to go and visit him and inquire after his illness. The Nirvana Sutra says, at that time the Tathagata assumed the appearance of one who is ill in body, and lay on his right side like a sick man. The Lotus Sutra states, the Tathagata is at ease, with few ailments and few troubles. The eighth volume of the Maka Shikan explains, Vimalakirti utilized his sickbed in Vishali to expound his teachings. The Tathagata used his death to teach the eternity of life and clarified the power of Buddhism through sickness. Another passage from the Maka Shikan says, There are six causes of illness. Number one, disharmony of the four elements. Number two, immoderate eating or drinking. Number three, poor posture. Number four, an attack by demons from without. Number five, the work of devils from within. And number six, the effects of karma. The Nirvana Sutra reads, there are three types of people whose illness is extremely difficult to cure. They are Number 1. Those who slander Mahayana Buddhism Number 2. Those who commit the five cardinal sins And Number 3. Those of incorrigible disbelief, Ashantaka. People in these categories suffer the worst known maladies. Another passage from the Nirvana Sutra states, One who creates evil karma in this life will surely suffer the torments of hell in the next. However, by serving the three treasures, one can avoid faffing into hell in the next life, but will instead suffer afflictions of the head, eye or back in this one. The Maka Shikari states, even if one has committed heavy slanders, their retribution can be lessened in this life. Thus, illness occurs when evil karma is about to be dissipated, in his Daichido Ran Bodhisattva Nagarjuna writes, question, if that is so, then none of the sutras from the Kegon to the Hanya is a secret teaching but the Lotus Sutra is secret. The Lotus Sutra is like a great physician who changes poison into medicine, Tian Te explained the quotation further, saying, this sutra enables the people of the two vehicles to attain enlightenment in the same way that a skilled physician can change poison into medicine. Therefore, the Daichido Ran reads, no other sutras are secret, but the Lotus Sutra is secret. The Maka Shikan says, since the Lotus Sutra can cure illness, it is also called Mayo or Mystic, Miaolo said, because it can cure that which is very difficult to cure, it is called Mayo or Mystic. The Nirvana Sutra relates the following story, King Ajatashatru of Rajagriya was wicked by nature he killed his father, but later, in a fit of remorse, he developed a high fever and boils broke out over his entire body. They were foul and evil smelling, repelling all who came near. His mother, Vedihi, tried to help by applying various medicines, but this only made the boils worse, there appeared to be no hope of recovery. The king explained to his mother that the boils had a spiritual cause and did not arise from a disharmony of the four elements, and that therefore ordinary physicians could not cure them. Then the world-honored one, the compassionate and merciful teacher, entered into a special, moon-loving meditation for the king's sake. When he had reached the deepest stage of his meditation, a brilliant ray of light shone forth from the Buddha and fell upon the body of the king. In that instant the boils were healed. The seventh volume of the Lotus Sutra, the Sutra of Universal Wisdom, says, this sutra is beneficial medicine for the illnesses of all mankind. If one is ill and can hear of this sutra, his illness will vanish immediately, and he will find perpetual youth and eternal life. In light of the above quotations, it would seem that your illness cannot have originated anywhere outside the six causes of disease. I will set aside the first five causes for the moment. Illnesses of the sixth, which result from karma, are the most difficult to cure. They vary in severity and one cannot make any fixed pronouncements, but we know that the gravest illnesses result from slandering the Lotus Sutra. Even Shen Nung, Huang Ti, Hua, To and Pian Chue threw up their hands, and Jisui, Rusui, Javaka and Vimalakirti likewise kept silent. Such illnesses can only be cured by the beneficial medicine of Shakyamuni Buddha's Lotus Sutra, as that sutra itself explains. The Nirvana Sutra, referring to the Lotus Sutra, states, even slander of the true law will be eradicated if one repents and professes faith in the true law. 
he should devote himself to the true law, because no other teaching can save or protect him. The great teacher Miao Lo says, Shakyamuni himself in the Nirvana Sutra says that the Lotus Sutra is the highest of his teachings. He further says, one who falls to the ground rises by pushing himself up from the ground. In the same way, one with an evil heart who is destined for hell can, by slandering the true law, be saved by it. Bodhisattva Vasubandhu was originally a scholar of Hinayana Buddhism. In an effort to prevent Mahayana Buddhism from spreading throughout India, he wrote 500 treatises on Hinayana Buddhism. He awoke to the error of his views, however, when he talked with Bodhisattva Asanga. Vasubandhu told Asanga that he wanted to cut out his tongue in order to eradicate the error of his former preaching. Asanga restrained him, saying, instead, use your tongue to praise Mahayana Buddhism. Then Vasubandhu immediately wrote 500 treatises on Mahayana Buddhism in order to refute Hinayana Buddhism. He also vowed that he would never preach another word of Hinayana Buddhism for the rest of his life. In this way he eradicated his slander and was later reborn in the heaven where Bodhisattva Moroku lives. Bodhisattva Ashvagosha, a native of eastern India, was 13th among Shakyamuni's successors. At one time Ashvagosha had been a leader of Brahmanism. However, when he debated with the Buddhist monk Punya Yasha over the validity of their respective teachings, he quickly realized the superiority of Buddhism. Ashvagosha was prepared to behead himself in order to pay for his past offense, saying, I have been my own worst enemy, leading myself to hell. But Punyayasha admonished him, saying, Do not behead yourself. Instead, use your mind and your mouth to praise Mahayana Buddhism. Ashvagosha soon thereafter wrote the Dejo Kishinran, Awakening of Faith in the Mahayana, in which he refuted all Brahmin teachings as well as Hinayana Buddhism. This marked the beginning of the spread of Mahayana Buddhism in India. The great teacher Kai Sang of Chia Sang Temple was among the most outstanding scholar priests in China. He was the founder of the Sanran sect, and lived in Wei in Wu. Believing that none could equal him in knowledge, he was very haughty. He challenged the great teacher Tian Te to discuss the meaning of the phrase in the Lotus Sutra which states, Of all the innumerable sutras I have taught, now teach, or will teach in the future, the Lotus Sutra is the most difficult to believe and the most difficult to understand. In the debate, Chisang was soundly defeated, and thereupon renounced his misguided beliefs. In order to expiate his heavy slander of the true law and those who practiced it, he gathered more than 100 eminent scholars and begged Tian Te to lecture to them. Kai Sang used his body as a bridge for the great teacher Tian Te to walk on and supported Tian Te's feet with his head. Moreover, he served Tian Te for seven years, cutting firewood and drawing water for him. He ceased giving lectures of his own, dispersed his followers and, in order to purge himself of his great conceit, refrained from reciting the Lotus Sutra. After Tian Te's death, Kai Sang had an audience with the emperor of the Sui dynasty to pay his respects. As he was leaving, he clutched his majesty's knees and tearfully bade him farewell. Sometime later, Kai Sang looked into an old mirror and, seeing his reflection, condemned himself for his past errors. All these many acts of penitence were done to eradicate his evil karma. The Lotus Sutra, the supreme vehicle, is the golden teaching of the three sages. Likened to an unsurpassed gem, it ranks highest among all the teachings of the past, present and future. There are passages in the Lotus Sutra which say, this sutra is superior to all other sutras, and, the Lotus Sutra is the foremost of all teachings. The great teacher Dengyo said that of all the sects in Japan, the Hawk, Lotus, sect is the very one, founded by Shakyamuni Buddha himself. I have made a thorough study of the Denichi, Kongocho, Soshitsuji and other sutras upon which the Shingon sect is based, but have found nothing written in them to justify the claim that these sutras are superior to the Lotus Sutra. This claim appears to be no more than the prejudiced view held by Shan Wu Wei, Chin Kong Chi, Pu Kang, Kobo, Jikaku, Chisho and others. Now, more than ever, I realize that it is the real intent of the Buddhas Shakyamuni and Denichi to place the Lotus Sutra above all other sutras. When Kobo Daishi, founder of the Shingon sect in Japan, Jikaku Daishi and Chisho Daishi went to China during the Tang Dynasty, 
they inherited from Wei Kuo and F.A. Chuanfei distorted doctrines originally held by Shan Wu Wei, Qin Kong Qi and Pu Kang. Returning to Japan, they propagated the Lotus Sutra and the Shingon teachings in such a way as to make it seem that the dim light of fireflies the two Shingon Mandatas, outshone the full moon of the Lotus Sutra, the supreme vehicle which surpasses all other sutras of the past, present and future. Not only that, they slandered the Lotus Sutra, saying that it was a work of childish theory, and that the Buddha of the Lotus Sutra was still in the region of darkness. However, these comments were like a dagger turned against those who made them. It is not the Lotus Sutra but the Danichi Sutra that is filled with childish theory, and it was Danichi himself who was in the region of darkness. The roots of the Shingon sect were its founders, and they were warped, to begin with. So how could its branches, their disciples and followers, be otherwise? Contamination at the source of a river will pollute its entire length. Because of this, the tree of Japan has had a long, dark night and is now about to be blighted by an alien frost. Although you were not in the mainstream of Shingen, you were still a retainer of a patron of that sect. You lived for many years in a house whose family was dedicated to an erroneous sect, and month after month your mind was infected by the teachers of error. Though huge mountains may crumble and the great seas dry up, this offense of yours will not easily pass away. However, because of the influence of past karma and the mercy that the Buddha bestows on you in this lifetime, you have met me and have determined to reform your ways. Therefore you will be spared worse suffering, though at the moment your offense has brought on these boils from which you suffer. King Ajatashatru suffered from severe boils because he committed the five cardinal sins and slandered the Lotus Sutra. But his boils disappeared instantly when the light produced by the Buddha's moon-loving meditation illuminated his body. And, though it had been predicted that the king had only 21 days left to live, his lifespan was extended 40 years. In deep appreciation, he rendered full support to 1,000 arhats so that they could record the golden teachings of the Buddha, 26 thus enabling the spread of Buddhism in the ages of the former, middle and latter days of the law. Your boils have resulted from only one offense slandering the Lotus Sutra. The healing power of the mystic law you now embrace is superior to that of the Buddha's moon-loving meditation. There is no reason why your boils cannot be healed and your life extended. If these words of mine do not prove to be true, you should shout, the Buddha, the eye of the entire world, is a great liar, and the Lotus Sutra of the Supreme Vehicle is filled with falsehood the world honored one should give me proof if he cares about his good name. All the saints and sages should come to protect me if they do not want to be untrue to their vows. A letter cannot convey all that one would like to say, and words cannot fully express what is in the heart. The rest will have to wait until the next time we meet. Respectfully, Nichiren. The third day of the eleventh month. Background. This letter is a reply to Ota Jomio's report that he was suffering from illness. It was written on November 3, 1275, at Mount Minobu, when Nichiren Daishonin was 54 years old. In the preceding year he had left Kamakura for the recesses of Mount Minobu. There, after retiring to an out-of-the-way place, he devoted himself to laying an eternal foundation for his Buddhism as a universal religion. Ota Jomio was a devout believer living in the province of Shimosa in central Japan. He was an official of the government and his colleague, Toki Janin, is thought to have introduced him to faith in the Daishonin's Buddhism. Both men worked together in that area to protect the Daishonin and propagate his teachings. Around 1278, Ota was tonsured, though he remained a layman. He assumed the religious name of Mayanichi, mystic son, given him by the Daishonin. He is also called Ota Nayudo, Nayudo meaning one who is tonsured like a monk but lives outside a temple, usually in his own home. Ota Jomio received many writings, including, On the Three Great Secret Laws, from the Daishonin, a fact which attests to the seriousness with which he regarded his religion. He died on April 26, 1283, the year after the Daishonin passed away, at the age of 62. In this letter, Nichiren Daishonin clarifies the fundamental cause of Ota's illness. He explains that since Ota Jomio had renounced his former faith in the Shingon doctrine and professed faith in true Buddhism, 
the evil effect of his past mistaken faith had appeared as sickness so that he could eradicate it once and for all. In other words, his past karma had become manifest so that he could erase it. The Daishonin then assures him of the essential cure for his disease faith in the Lotus Sutra, that is, the law of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. Nichiren Daishonin explains that his Buddhism is the supreme medicine for suffering people throughout the world.